Okay, so welcome to today's video tutorial. Today we're talking about <clears throat> MFD create and uh, anonymous files. So real quick, what is a anonymous file? So probably familiar with a uh, normal file. Um, anonymous one is different in that it does not live on the file system. Uh, not the one that you're used to using anyways. Um, what it does is it lives on tempfs, which is a virtual memory file system. And what, what this does is it stuffs that file system into RAM. So there's, there's a couple different use cases for this. Uh, one in particular is, is that since it's in memory, it's a lot faster to work with. However, since it is in memory, um, it's also volatile. So if you reboot your machine or, you know, the program crashes or, you know, any number of things like that, all that stuff is gone. So you definitely don't want to run like a database, for instance, on tempfs. You don't want it to be web scale, right? Um, so there's, there's other projects out there uh, also in the unikernel space that default to tempfs. It's a very bad idea, in my opinion. Like if you don't care about it, you know, whatever, but I would not, I would not be doing this on the normal. This is really for special use cases. Um, all right. So we, we chatted about that. What are some of these use cases in particular using anonymous files? Well, to give you some history, uh, if we go back to the nineties, uh, before we had threads and SP and virtual machines and yada, yada, um, it was very common for multiple processes uh, to be composed into one program. And so instead of spawning like multiple threads, we would have, you know, multiple processes and they would, they would talk to each other. Uh, you know, there's still some of this going on today. Uh, and one of these constructs that they would, they would use to talk to each other was shared memory. So uh, basically the way this works is that you know, if I have process A, process B, and they're on the same machine, you could spawn a TCP connection, but that's rather slow. There's some setup time involved, um, and it's on the same machine, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So some people will be like, well, I'll use a uh, Unix connection instead. Um, that is faster, but it's still, you know, it's a little bit slow still. And so shared memory is one of these constructs where you can literally share a block of memory with another process. As you can imagine, there's lots of problems with this, with this uh, method of doing that. You know, like if process A crashes, you know, and it still has a ref to that block of memory, or maybe another process forks off another process, um, you know, maybe one process decides to enlarge that memory or truncate it or overwrite it or you know there's there's all sorts of messy issues with this style of programming which is why it's heavily shunned today um but withstanding you know some of the capabilities that mfd create gives you is uh is this ability to kind of work around some of these issues um in particular uh mfd has uh this uh this really interesting abstraction called file sealing. And basically uh, what you can do is you can kind of seal files, uh, these anonymous files, and you could say, hey, um, once it's sealed, you can't actually write to it anymore. Or you can't, um, you know, uh, you, you could shrink it and then like no more writes or, or you can set it to a certain size or whatever. And so, so this whole sealing API is kind of interesting, but it, exist because of these underlying issues that shared memory had to begin with. Now, this is interesting when it comes to unikernels because unikernels, as you might be aware of, don't do multiple processes. And so when it comes to things like shared memory, like Nano's unikernel in particular, like we really haven't ever had a use case <laughs> for this sort of stuff. Um, however, this student, um, I believe he's from Munich or Berlin or some, yeah, Berlin. So he had popped in asking if, uh, you know, we had support for this syscall. We didn't at the time because of the whole shared memory, yada, yada. Um, but his use case was pretty, pretty, um, you know, acceptable 
uh, basically had a ring buffer, uses mmap under the hood, and uh, this is the file that he's creating, this little Q buffer. So we're like, yeah, that's a, that's a good use case. Um, so we went ahead and implemented it. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you real quick how to use this. It's, it's essentially the same thing working with like a normal file, um, but it doesn't actually exist on the file system as you would see it. So let's pop in and see the code. All right, so this is a pretty basic example. Um, just kind of like wrote it out here to so you can kind of like really kind of see uh, how everything's working here. This uh, GNU source lineup here is just to allow us to use certain functions because this is kind of a Linux only thing, not a POSIX thing. So don't expect it to work on every system out there. Um, obviously, we're not Linux, but we're largely Linux compatible, and so um, works for us. But if we go down into here, um, we basically create the file reference for Leo Marvin, and we uh, we go ahead and truncate this file. It's not necessary to do this um, as long as you're writing to it right away. I mean, the man pages say you should do it immediately, but uh, but yeah, anyways. Um, and then we write to it. So this is a very basic write. Again, you know, this is just a file descriptor. Um, we're gonna write to it. We're gonna rewind the file. I'll seek um, back to, you know, OO. And then we're going to read into the contents or buffer here. Pretty basic, right? So um, if we come over here, we can run it here. It says, what's up, Bob? As you can see, there is no file created called Leo Marvin on the file system. Um, now we can run it with Nanos. I'll show you the two Calebs that we have here. Uh, we have uh, shared mem and tempfs. So shared mem actually, what is it? Yeah, sh the uh, shared memory implementation, which really we only have this MFD create, relies on tempfs. Um, we have these separate because we figure there's probably use cases in the future where you might want to do tempfs, but not this other stuff, uh, which is pretty reasonable assumption. So you include these Klibs, and then you can do config JSON. Um, I'm gonna throw on the nightly flag uh, because this is actually in a this is in master, um, which will pick up in the nightly branch, but it's not actually in a release yet. And then we do main. So as you can see, first it wrote our file, what's up Bob, to Leo Marvin's um, file. And then it uh, read back the contents. We can use our tree to kind of take a look at the file system as it exists. Um, as you can see, the file didn't actually appear on the file system. Now in Linux, you might actually see a reference for this in proc. Uh, one thing to note about nanosproc is, is that we do the absolute bare minimum for proc. It's not a garbage dumpster fire for us. Um, you'll see things like proc self exe, for instance. Um, Go in particular needs that. Uh, so there's some other programs that just default to that. Again, this is like Linux only stuff, but you know, we kind of walked away from the whole <laughs> POSIX compatibility thing a long time ago, even before Nanos was a thing. So, uh, yeah, buyer beware on that. Anyways, um, anonymous files, uh, you can create, read, write, truncate, do all that sort of stuff and not touch the file system. And uh, I guess until next time, we'll, we'll catch you later. Bye.